Greetings in the name of the risen Christ. My name is Greg Garris. I'm one of the pastors here at St. Philip Presbyterian Church in Hearst, Texas. For this video devotional, I want to read a passage from Luke's Gospel. It's recorded in the 24th chapter. It's verses 13 through 31. Listen for God's word. Now on that same day, the day that Jesus rose from the dead, two of them, two of Jesus' disciples, were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about the things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place in these days? And he asked them, What things? And they replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in word and deed before God and all of the people. And now our chief priests, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was one of the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astonished us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us they had, that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as as the women had said, but they did not see him. And then he, Jesus, said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not the that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all of the scriptures. They came near to a village to which they were going, and he walked ahead of the, as if he were going along. But, as, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So we went in to stay with them. And the, when he was at table with them, he took bread, blessed it, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's a question that has been asked about this passage of why didn't the disciples of Jesus on that Emmaus road recognize him? Biblical scholars have come up with a lot of interesting ideas. Some say that the road that they were taking placed the disciples in the westward sun and their vision was impaired. Other scholars have suggested that it was a matter of expectation. The disciples really didn't expect to see Jesus again and naturally assumed that Jesus was somebody else. Still other biblical scholars have pointed to the transformed nature of Jesus' resurrected body that might have made him look a little different and difficult to recognize. Preacher John Claypool, who once was a Southern Baptist preacher who became an Episcopal priest, preached a sermon on this passage in which he called attention to what has become the most revealing point of Jesus' encounter with those disciples. Claypool pointed out that the moment of recognition came when they invited Jesus in and heard him bless the bread. Now just think about this for a moment. What a remarkable testimony to the gratitude of Jesus that his blessing of a simple loaf of bread triggered their recognition of Jesus. Jesus never took anything for granted, but related all good things to their source, God. Jesus was known for his gratitude. Some time ago, I visited a church member in a nursing home. 
often uh, these nursing homes are not the best situations for some of our members, but it's the best that they can usually have. After we exchanged the greetings, this church member said to me, You know, Greg, I'm blessed, and I know it. I told her that she was certainly blessed in life with good gifts and talents that made her life full and rich. That church member in that nursing home, even in that place, recognized how God blessed her, and she was grateful to God. And that's the prayer that I had with her before I left, a prayer of thanksgiving for the blessings and the gifts that God had given. You know, I hope that I can be like that when I grow older. I hope that I can recognize the good gifts and the blessings that God has given to me and not be bitter or depressed by the condition or situation that I find myself in. But now, you know, as I think about it, I hope that I'm like this today and tomorrow and every day even when I feel isolated from the church and other church members, and even when staying at home so much can make me have cabin fever. Perhaps all of us can take a lesson from this church member and try to be more grateful for what God has provided, especially in this time, and not to be so concerned about our present situation. Because of Christ and His resurrection, we have hope. Hope that soon we will be together as a church and be together as a family and that we will get back to the life that God calls us to live. A life lived in the light of the resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord. And for that I say, thanks be to God. Blessings and peace.